Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Philosophy of Fitness podcast, episode number 33. My name is Haley. I'm going to be your host today and every single day that you are tuning in. Today, I am joined with Stephen Jaggers. We had such an amazing conversation about breath work, somatic healing, trauma release, and I am so excited to share this highly insightful, enlightening conversation with you all. I certainly learned so much from this. So I'm going to share a little bit about what Stephen is about. So his purpose with what he does is to help people heal their bodies and repattern their mind to liberate them so that they can live a life of purpose and passion. And as you know, with this podcast, I'm certainly quite passionate about the mind-body connection. And Stephen also believes that there is an exact correlation between our physical vitality and our mental health. If we want to improve the quality of our lives, we must address both. So again, the mind affects the body and the body affects the mind. Healing in both liberates us from the trauma and the fog that inhibits us from finding the highest quality of life within reach. So Stephen specializes in modalities from neuromuscular therapy to human optimization fitness and even goes so far as cranial sacral therapy. Um, But he's also really into somatic release breath work and iron mind coaching as well. But the main focus of our conversation today is really on somatic release breath work, trauma, as I mentioned. So he has such an amazing story of what led him on this path. And he's just really, it was such an enlightening conversation. I can't wait for you all to hear it. So if you're interested in learning about breath work, again, trauma release, we even dive into plant medicine a little bit too, uh, kind of getting quite esoteric on here. So definitely stay tuned, guys. This was such an enlightening conversation and I can't wait for you to hear it. All right. Hello, my friends. Today I am joined with Stephen Jaggers. Welcome. I'm so excited to have you on. Oh, thank you. It's such a pleasure. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah, absolutely. So you um, you have quite an interesting array of stuff that you're kind of dipping your hands in. Um, predominantly breath work, right? Somatic release? Predominantly, that's my main modality right now. You know, I started off as a personal trainer um, and then also a body worker. So my journey, um, you know, I've always been really body oriented. I, I've played sports. I've been really physical my whole life, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, martial arts, basketball in high school and college for a little while. I've always been a really physical person. So, um, and I also have been very interested in psychology and uh, I kind of went to school for uh, physical therapy in the beginning and also psychology i couldn't decide which one i wanted to do and so eventually now i've kind of merged them both and and now i'm in this um this realm of you know how the body how we physically store trauma and how to help release that and uh through my years of of personal training you know I, i really was helping people to get solid in their body and you know healthy and aligned and and um but there was an aspect of it that wasn't addressing underlying issues of um, people's mentality and and, um, sort of injuries and, and, uh, you know, pains that kind of wouldn't go away, even though we'd, we would address them physically. So I went from being a personal trainer to uh, studying massage therapy and becoming a neuromuscular therapist and really delving into body work and helping people release and, and uh, you know, get their physical body aligned. Uh, and then that, you know, that, that scientific study really uh, had me delve into more of the energetics of the body and understanding, um, yeah, how we, uh, you know, kind of bridging the gap between uh, Western medicine and a scientific understanding of our body and our nervous system with uh, kind of Eastern traditions of, you know, um, the energetics of the body, how, um, you know, our meridians, our, you know, chakras, all of these things um, uh, become blocked and, and cause issues as well. So uh, sort of mind and body alignment is, is where I've, uh, I've landed right now. And I, I've found that breath work is the, uh, the most powerful modality for that at this, at this point in time for me. Wow, that's, um, that is such a cool kind of story of what led you to where you are now. I also am a personal trainer. Um, it's kind of funny because I used to have a corporate job. Uh, I hated it. You know, I quit the whole corporate rat race. It was just like the most, I call it soul sucking, um, kind of path. 
And I quickly realized that that was not um, the the trajectory that I wanted to be on. So I became a personal trainer. And the more that I've just like delved into this stuff, I had my spiritual awakening last year. Like you, the mind body connection has become something that's so prevalent um, and something that I'm so curious about. And so breath work is one of those things that you know, I feel like our intuition kind of draws us to something that we might need uh, without really like knowing it. Like sometimes our body will know things before our mind does. And I've just been so curious about breath work lately because it's something that I haven't fully delved into. So um, where, what was it exactly that led you down that sort of spiritual side of tying the fitness into um, mm-hmm. the body? Okay. So probably through my own body, you know, having uh a lot of physical uh, injuries from a young age, just from being so active. And also I have a, um, oh, I had a little bit of scoliosis in my thoracic spine. So my thoracic spine was actually uh, fusing together and that was causing a lot of other issues within my body, um, mobility wise. And just was, you know, I noticed it in my spine and I was completely blocked, you know, flexibility wise of my spine, but it was also causing, you know, the, the further I started delving into it, it was, it was, um, an energetic block that, that potentially happened, uh, you know, through my developmental stages and, and really led me down this, this line of healing work and, and ultimately, uh, caused my own spiritual awakening. So, you know, I, I came to the realization that we are a mind body system, you know, and, and it's, and it's together and we can address the physical body. You know, you can like, uh, do all your physical exercises, you know, you can eat all the kale, all the superfoods or whatever you, you know, whatever you think is, is good nutrition. You can, you know, do all your stretching, you can do all your corrective exercises. You can, you know, drink high quality water, but if you're not uh, addressing your underlying emotional realms and your, um, you know, your, your, what, what's feeding your spirit, you know, like, like if you're in a job that's soul sucking and, and you're not doing the things that light you up, um, ultimately uh, you are going to get swung to one of the other, one of the other pendulums. You could be doing all of, you could be on your soul's mission. You could be, you know, helping tons of people, but if you're not, uh, actively taking care of your physical body then you're going to get thrown to that side so we really have to address you know um both sides of that and that's that's kind of my mission but you know i uh i i come from two parents that were uh addicts both of them you know i'm an only child both of them were addicted to meth uh from you know before before i was born to uh you know, probably, you know, I don't really know, probably till I was five or six years old, you know, and they mean well, and, and, uh, and ultimately is because they were incredibly traumatized as well, too. And there goes into a whole, you know, psychology of addiction and, and all of that, uh, you know, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. But, you know, through those developmental stages of my life, I, I, I know I was uh, under significant trauma. Um, you know, trauma is not what happens to you. It is what happens inside of you from what happens to you. Does that make sense? Wow, that's deep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not necessarily like something that's traumatic to me might not be traumatic to you. You know, so um, it's, it's a result of what happens inside of you. So ultimately, you know, I think I was under a lot of trauma when I was, when I was, uh, when I was born that kept me kind of, um, uh, contracted in a, in a, in a phase of holding my body and, you know, not letting the world in. So, you know, perhaps my spine, my body started to develop like that. And, uh, through, you know, awareness is the first step, you know, as soon as I got older, I, I started to, to realize, wow, my, my spine is kind of, a, you know, I have a kyphotic curve that was causing scoliosis or, or, um, fusing of my vertebrae. So, you know, and I would do, like I would do all the yoga, I would do all the physical activity, I would do everything. And, and uh, it was helping. Uh, it was helping to a certain extent. But then I had to figure out more of the underlying emotional things that were there. And, you know, through, 
you know, I went through my first phase of personal training and really trying to fix my body that way. And then, you know, body work and, and having people work on me and, and uh, really open things up. And, you know, as soon as you get into body work, then you start to bridge the gap between, you know, the uh, uh, Western modalities to, you know, a lot of Eastern modalities, understanding uh, your meridians and how energy gets blocked in those certain areas. So, yeah. I like, um, you said something about like a pendulum, you know, the kind of notion of the mind and the body, and you could be so focused on, on one, but I think a lot of people, especially now in the fitness industry, you know, it's the, the body is so heavily emphasized. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and something that I personally find a lot is people will be like hustle culture, you know, go, 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 go. Um, and some people that I know, they don't really believe in like rest days or taking time off, but that's where that sort of, you know, inner connection comes into play. And it's oh, yeah. taking that time to, to recenter and to dive inward. That's actually going to, I've found at yeah. least propel you to the next level. So yeah, you got to keep that pendulum kind of in the, in the middle balanced. Yeah. And we live in, you know, you could, you could replace the word pendulum for polarity or duality. You know, we live in a dual reality. Um, just like you said, if you are, uh, if you are working out all the time, uh, you also need to work in. Uh, that's a concept from Paul Cech, uh, one of my mentors who uh, really helped me uh, understand that concept. And, you know, you're not, you're not getting stronger while you're working out. You're getting stronger while you are resting. You're getting stronger while you are repairing. And uh, you can work out all you want. You can do all the physical activity. You can hustle all the time. But if you're not taking the time to rest and, uh, and, and meditate and, and, uh, you know, that is a time where your ideas will come, where your body's physically healing itself. You know, a big one that I use with my clients is uh, understanding the, the, the cycles of nature and understanding that we go through the seasons uh, within ourself. And, you know, right now I'm in the city, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona, where we're, this is a, a he heavy hustle culture here. And uh, a lot of people get burnt out. And I work with people to understand that you have to go through a cycle. You have to go through, you know, you could say, uh, you know, hustle season could be like your summer where you're active, you're like full on fire mode, you know, you're getting so much shit done. And then eventually you need to go through like a stage of fall where it's like, okay, now you're letting your leaves go. You're clearing out the things that might not be serving you. You're clearing out the things that um, are taking up too much energy. And then, you know, you have to go through a winter where you are strictly just resting. You are just, you know, you've cleared everything out. You become almost empty. So that way, when it's springtime, you can plant your seeds for what you want to create during summer. You know, you can start coming up with new ideas. You can start, um, you know, planning. You know, that, that would be like your springtime. And then, you know, you fluctuate into summer where that's like, that's like go mode. That's like take action. But it's really important to understand that you need to go through these cycles. You can't spend all your time in summertime or you're just going to burn yourself out and there will be no repair. There will be no chance to um, el eliminate things and there will be no chance for planning. Yeah, I think that's really important. And the same kind of notion, too, is you can't just spend the time sort of in that stillness either. Eventually, you're going to have to come to a point, you know, where you take that action. Absolutely. Um, and I think going off of that, um, it sounds like release is a big part of that too, you know, in order to make space for the new, mm -hmm. um, I always kind of tell people the analogy of if you were looking to redo your house, you know, your bedroom or something, you'd have to first get rid of everything that's old in there. That's been cluttering it to make space for everything new that's coming in. So that like release mentality, I think is a big part of that. And, um, I'm kind of curious yeah. to see what you've experienced in your own life. And even with people you've worked with of how breath work kind of helps to, um, release. Yeah, that's the biggest, that's the biggest part. And that's what I was hoping you would lead into because, um, specifically somatic release breath work is, is what, what I call it. And, uh, it is designed to help you release stress equals pressure. When someone's stressing you, they're putting pressure on you, you know, um, when you go through a traumatic event, it's an immense amount of pressure that's put on you. So how do you get rid of the pressure? You have to X the pressure or you have to express. And if you don't express, then you suppress. And if you suppress, then you become depressed. 
And all of these things are, are, are basically, um, we've shoved the pressure, we've shoved it down into our body and we haven't let ourselves feel it. So uh, the, the breath work that I teach is to allow things to come up and move through you. You know, some of the best artwork, some of the best music, some of the best poetry, some of the best creative things have come from people who are incredibly stressed out that have, or have gone through incredible, incredibly traumatic instances that have found a way to express it out into, um, you know, whatever their modality is. So, you know, the breath work that I teach is really to, first of all, go inside and feel the things that you haven't been feeling. Um, what have you still been holding on to? And, and you know, the, the, the specific type of breath that I teach uh, causes what some people call a near-death experience, which, you know, your, your, your brain starts to uh, produce a, a significant amount of DMT, um, which if you're familiar with is the spirit molecule, which will really show you you know, you secrete it when you, when you die, when you're giving birth, and a little bit when, uh, during your dreaming states. So when you get into that state, you can really see clearly the shit that you've been holding on to. And you can really give yourself, you know, the, the space that I create is giving self people permission to feel and to express whether that's crying, whether that's shaking, whether that's screaming, whether that's laughing, whether that's just holding yourself any of those things allow you to feel it and allow it to move through you so that it's not holding, you're not holding on it onto it. You're not holding on to it anymore. Your body doesn't have to contract around it. You have space to, you know, use that energy towards manifestation or towards, you know, creating new things or, you know, launching new business endeavors or, or, or whatever it is. So, yeah, that's kind of been what my life's work has been around so far. Yeah, that's amazing. I love the notion of, you know, physically just releasing it from our bodies. I think Joe Dispenza even talks about it, like stress is, you know, disease is dis-ease, living in that state of stress. And um, our bodies almost sometimes become like addicted to that state of stress, whether we realize it or not, Oh yeah, um, which is crazy. But something else that I thought about just when you were talking about manifestation um, I love the law of attraction. You know, I discovered it back in 2013 with um, the movie The Secret, which I'm sure a lot of people listening to this are familiar with. That's like the first, you know, stepping stone into this whole realm. Um, but I think a big thing that a lot of people miss with that and something that I had fallen into the trap of was not allowing myself to feel the full spectrum of emotions. Like I would literally mm -hmm. get so I would beat myself up if I was having a negative thought and I would just suppress it and keep it down until it just reaches like a breaking point, literally. Um, and so I think a big part of it too, is allowing yourself to feel that full range and not, um, not being so hard on yourself. It's a part of the human experience for us to, to work through it and to feel, it. and that's something that I've been, you know, trying to learn on my journey, but, um, it sounds like you're doing really powerful, um, stuff with that, with breath work. So, yeah, I'll say that that piece of manifestation that you were talking about, if you don't feel it then it's stuck inside of you. So then you are continually, continuously manifesting that, that fear, that trauma, because you are, the body wants resolution. Your mind wants resolution. So if you are not letting yourself feel it, you are going to continue to manifest uh, situations in your life where you will, will um, attract those scenarios to cause you to feel it, to feel it. You know, if it's a, if it's a relationship thing, if it's a, uh, if it's a money thing, you will continue to, you know, attract those negative situations to, um, put yourself in position to where you can, uh, go through it, feel it, release it, and then you can evolve past it. So just like you said, you know, you have to let yourself feel, you know, our human, this is such a human experience and, and it's, a uh, it's a beautiful thing to be able to uh, feel the full spectrum of emotion, you know, to feel the lowest of lows. And, and when we feel the lowest of lows, that allows us to feel the highest of highs. If we block ourselves off from the lowest of lows, we block ourselves off on that, on that polarity to the high, to feeling the highest of highs. And, uh, 
yeah, it's a powerful, it's a, it's, it's a powerful thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And going off of that too, I always kind of think, you know, if we didn't feel all of those really low vibrational emotions or feel really low, then we wouldn't be able to appreciate the good feelings on the other side of it. If we were constantly at a place of like neutrality, then we wouldn't have that appreciation for the other side of it. And like you said, it's, this is our human experience, right? Like we are meant to, to feel it all. If we weren't meant to feel it all, we would just be walking around emotionless. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing to be able to feel the full spectrum of life. Another piece of that manifestation thing that I think a lot of people are missing is, um, you know, you can, like you said, you know, in the beginning, I feel like a lot of people go through that, like positive thinking, positive thinking, you know, like, uh, um, and they, if they have a negative day that they really um, just get so hard on themselves. And then they're like, you know, they're like, they're like, fuck, I'm going to manifest that sort of thing. But, but really, I, you know, for myself, I've kind of added on to that, uh, that law of attraction where when you are in alignment and that is your thoughts are in alignment with your words are in alignment with your actions. And that is when you're in a place of congruency or a place of alignment with yourself, people want to be around people that are congruent. People want to be around people that their their thoughts are the same thing as they're speaking is the same thing they're doing you know when you are in that place of alignment your auric field is becoming magnetic and you will naturally start to attract things because people will will feel that genuine authenticity and you will start to manifest situations where um what you're thinking what you're speaking and what you're doing what you're taking action on um, will start to magnetize into your reality. So it's all three of those things firing at the same time. That's a great point. I love that notion of living authentically because that's something that I really struggled with for a while because as a kid, I was bullied. I didn't fit in and I always felt like I was trying to, you know, fit into someone's mold of what I thought they wanted me to be kind of thing. And when I let go of that, um, expectation even found myself nobody else was putting it on me it was me putting it on myself when I let go of that and I said you know what like fuck this I'm just gonna live my life I'm gonna speak my truth share what I'm passionate about and hopefully that if it resonates with people great if it doesn't no problem and when I started to just authentically express myself I noticed that a lot of things really started falling into place for me and I really let go of so much pressure that I was putting on myself Absolutely. You start to be a living expression of your truth. And when that happens, everybody around you feels it, you feel it. And then you, you have the energy to continue to do it. Cause if you're not living from a place of authenticity, you're not living your truth. Um, you will be borrowing energy from other sources to continue that facade of expression because it's not your authentic expression. And that's another thing that happens within the breath work that I've seen is that once you clear out a lot of the shit that you've been holding on to, a lot of the things that have happened to you, a lot of the stuff that's been put on to you by your parents, or whatever and that you're holding on to your body, once you allow yourself to fit, you clear it, then you start to become clear on what is actually you. What is actually your truth? What is actually your life mission, your soul's purpose during this lifetime? And that is another huge piece of the breath work that I have found that has helped a ton of people find clarity on what is my authentic expression? What is my, you know, um, what are my strengths? What, what is my power? And uh, that's usually what, I'll, what I'll, uh, the sessions are designed around. It's designed around clearing and then becoming clear on what is the life, the life mission, the purpose, because I do believe that, uh, that, you know, as souls, we, we come into this life, uh, with a purpose with everyone has their specific purpose and, and, uh, the thing that they're trying to accomplish or, um, feel during this lifetime. Oh, absolutely. I think everyone, whether they know it or not, you know, I think everyone yeah. listening to this, obviously, if they're listening to this kind of stuff, they probably realize they have, um, a, a purpose here, but everyone has a purpose. And something that's helped me is, um, meditating. I got really into meditation last year and that's helped me, um, just so much 
especially with, you know, like anxiety, just calming the mind, sort of taking the time and the space to dive inward. And that's what really, you know, was part of that catalyst for me starting this podcast, starting to speak more about my spiritual experience and share that with the world. But um, it sounds like breathwork is an even more powerful uh, modality to kind of get there. Yeah, it's definitely a quick, a quick route. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of hype around the, uh, the plant medicine community and the, um, you know, psychedelics and, and that whole thing to kind of show you and to clear a lot of stuff out. And, and, uh, it's very powerful it, and, and it's, it's, uh, it can be very helpful and it's helped me along my journey as well. But the difference between the breath, like breath work, uh, versus plant medicine is that, you know, plants have their own agenda. Uh, you know, mushrooms have their own agenda. Ayahuasca has its own agenda as a plant, you know, even like coffee has its own agenda and all of these plants, they have their own, um, energy that wants to move through your body. So the difference between the breath is the breath is your energy. It is your own agenda. It is your inspiration. You know, a lot of religions, a lot of uh, cultures believe that the soul enters the body through its first inspiration. And to inspire is to take in the spirit. To in spirit, inspire is to take in the spirit. So when you're doing this breath work, you, you are taking in your spirit. You are reclaiming it into your body. And all of the messages, all of the insights that you receive um, is, is from you specifically. So the integration portion of it and the, um, the realizations are clear as day from this. You know, you're not under the influence of any, um, anything else. So I've just found that it's, it's incredibly powerful for uh, direct integration and direct receiving of messages and direct clearing. That's really powerful. I think you're one of the first people I've heard to kind of share that distinction between breathwork and plant medicine. Yeah. Um, and that idea of the plant having its own agenda, I think is quite powerful. Cause I know so many people that, um, you know, are real advocates for and, um, speak very highly of all different kinds of plant medicine. But, um, yeah, like you said, if it's your, your inspiration, it's coming from you and you alone. There's nobody else that's manufacturing that for you. Um, there's nothing else that's influencing it. So that's really powerful. Yeah, a lot of people receive so many insights during an ayahuasca journey or, or during these other journeys. And, and uh, you know, some people have a hard time integrating it because they're like, was it me? Was it the ayahuasca? Was it the mushrooms? Was it, you know, what was it? And, uh, and it is solely you and your spirit and yourself. And it's very interesting. On my, re on my most recent podcast, I, uh, I interview... Um, a woman who started the uh, healing retreat in Costa Rica called Soltara Healing Center. Um, and it's an ayahuasca retreat that is really doing it uh, a great job of um, helping people with plant medicine. But they, she said that the, uh, the traditional Shipibo healers, who are the indigenous uh, users of ayahuasca, they said that the number one way to tell if people have what they call sustas, and sustas mean um, trauma, basically. But they identify trauma as, as a part of your soul has left your body, has fragmented off. So how they tell that people have trauma or, or have blockages or whatever it is, they tell in people's breath. So the breath is the number one diagnostic tool oh, wow. to, tell it, to tell if you have blockages. So when people take a full deep breath in, if they can't breathe all the way into the belly, if they can't breathe all the way into their deep emotional centers, then those areas are cut off. Or, or when you're breathing in, if there are those little, um, little hiccups in the breath or little, uh, like people go, <gasps> Oh know, yeah. Little, like those, when you're about to cry or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If there are those little, um, blockages within your in breath or your out breath, then you know, that this person has a blockage somewhere in their system. So that wow. is the number one diagnostic tool to tell if you have, and you can even see if someone does a full body breath, you can see in their physical body, 
where that blockage is at and you can have them breathe into that specific area and clear it out using that sort of breath work. So it's, it's incredibly powerful. And, you know, I, I used to do it with manual work. I would physically go in there and help people release, you know, with my hands and, and such, but you know, there are defense mechanisms that come from your body when you are doing touch, you know, for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. So when I'm touching someone there, they might have certain defense systems against the touch as if it's their own breath, they're the one breathing into it and they're the one clearing yeah. it. So there really is no, there is really um, no defense mechanisms besides your own, your own self and, and, uh, and, and you can really break through during it. Wow. That's, you know, that kind of makes me think you said something earlier about when you were a kid that you're, you had scoliosis, right. And your spine mm -hmm. was kind of, um, you know, sort yeah. of like, like the body almost was, um, I don't know how to say it, like inhabiting what you were feeling, like Attracted. storing it. Yeah. It's really interesting. Exactly. Exactly. And I had to go through, I had to go through deep, um, states of allowing myself to feel the pain to feel the, um, what it was like to grow up with, with, uh, with parents that were deeply wounded. And I had to have somebody, a guide, um, a mentor around to be able to hold me in that space to where I felt safe enough to let myself feel it. And that's the biggest thing is you can do breath work yourself, but it's a different thing to be in the presence or to be held through your process um and to feel safe and to be given permission to feel it and to really let it come up through you it's a it's a whole different thing you know the first uh one of my first mentors when i was when i was first going through school for um body work and specifically energy work called polarity therapy uh that was when i that's when i started to understand the energetic anatomy and, and how emotions uh get stuck in the body but you know i was sitting i i, I he, he he said he needed an example in front of the class and and so i was like okay like I'll, i raised my hand and i was like okay like use me as an example and and uh he just came up and put his hand slightly on my back right where my my scoliosis was and just a little bit and he's like i think you need some it's never felt support in this place before and just push my back up just a little bit and at that point in time i fell to the ground and started wow. crying and just like full on just let myself feel everything it came you know he was he's a wizard but um <laughs> it, it was the first time that i really like felt uh the deep pain and the deep sadness and let it go through me and once I had that, you know, crying and that sobbing and that, you know, allowing myself to feel, I walked out of that class feeling so much lighter. I was standing up taller. I, I was not carrying that emotional baggage or at least some of it, you know, it takes time, but I was not carrying a lot of that emotional baggage that I was um, walking into there that I probably was carrying around for most of my life. Yeah. It all goes back to that idea of, um, release and just how powerful it is. I feel like sometimes as a society, we're kind of conditioned to, you know, especially men in particular, masculine energy, like, you know, just hide your feelings, you know, you're not supposed to cry or show whatever, but it's like, that's where we really find our power is in fully allowing ourselves to feel. Cause like with what you're saying, or, you know, with a lot of what you're saying, um, the, the longer you store it, the longer you're going to be carrying that weight and it's going to just like compound on itself. I think of it as like a thought backpack is like just oh, yeah. keep dumping textbooks into it and it just gets heavier and heavier. Absolutely. And I will say that a lot of the times, a lot of the times people's purpose, people's life mission, people's thing that they want to accomplish in this world is usually directly related to their trauma, the shit that they've gone through, the, um, you know, their shadow. My deepest trauma, my deepest place that I was hurt gave me the most amount of experience, the most amount of empathy, um, the most amount of knowledge and resource and energy to help others, to find a deep purpose within myself. And I've noticed that uh, 
that most people find their their life mission, their their deepest purpose in um, the places that they were wounded, the places that they've they've been hurt. Yeah, that's powerful. It's kind of ironic how I even think for I think many people that have had a spiritual awakening, and I can certainly speak for myself. Um, you know, the lowest of lows are what sort of force you to, at least in my experience last year, I dealt with a lot of stuff. Um, and it forced me to say, okay, what's the point of this all? Like, why am I here? What, what is all of this? Um, and it's from that low point that you start to, you know, further explore yourself. And that's when you start to kind of realize your true purpose. Like you said, on this planet is it, sometimes it just takes that immense amount of pressure. Um, and I think, I think honestly, that's what's going on on a global scale right now, too. It's like, I mean, mass pressure from all sides. And I think a lot of people are starting to question their purpose, um, their passion, their mission, even. Yeah, absolutely. We're going through a uh, collective shadow journey, a collective, um, yep. a collective <laughs> traumatic experience that's causing people to really take a look at themselves and uh, what actually matters in their life, you know? Um, we, there is no other time besides right now to, to live your soul's mission, live your, your, your highest purpose to, you know, cause we don't, we don't know what the future holds, you know, for a while, I think people are just working a job to make money and to, you know, or to buy nice things or whatever it is. And, and eventually you will find out that that's a dead end road. Um, especially when you have certain life events that really wake you up to what, what matters in your life. So you know, right now we don't, we don't have any other choice, but to go all in on ourselves. Thousand percent. I, you know, obviously it's a challenging time for everyone, but I think this is probably one of the most exciting times to be alive. Cause I don't really think there's ever been a point in our history where so many people have woken up to their truth right? Like on a collective level. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm certainly very excited, uh, you know, to see what the future has to hold and for other people to, to wake up to their truth and to, to question, you know, themselves, this existence, all of it. Yeah. This has been the best year ever for me, you know, and like, this has been, uh, you know, it's been tough at certain times, but it's caused me to, um, pivot, and shift gears and, and uh, go fully in on my own business and fully in on myself. And, you know, there is a, a health revolution going on. You know, we, we were facing these, this, you know, uh, global pandemic, uh, global sickness, if you will, um, that's really causing people to take a look at their own health and their own mental health and their physical health and their spiritual health as well. And, um, it's been a it's been a it's been a powerful powerful year and I'm I like I'm like you I'm excited to uh, to see uh, the shift because unfortunately it takes a it, a lot of the times it takes a traumatic experience it takes a, um, a universal sledgehammer if you will to wake people up and um, I think that's what we're going through right now. And that's the narrative that I choose to, uh, to tune into. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you think of it too, as like, um, you said, like you choose to tune into that narrative. You can think of it as tuning into, to the reality that you want to continue to see, right? Like you always have the power of choice. I always mm. say that, you know, we may not have that's total control. Superpower. Yeah. And we may not have control over, you know, whatever's going on in the global landscape, but you always have a choice of your perception of it and how you choose to, um, how you choose to view that and embody it. And I also, I don't choose to live in a constant state of fear or, you know, resentment towards whatever, or just in this like low vibrational, the world's going to end blah. you know, um, yeah. I choose to view it as, like you said, like it's like collective shadow work almost. Um, and just holding on to that notion that this is the, this is the time that people are going to start to really piece things together and bridge that gap between mind, body, and spirit. I think. Yeah, this is the time for us to really take a look at what, you know, take a look at ourselves and take a look at where we are uh, shoving things down and where we are not, you know, fully expressing our truth. And yeah, ab absolutely. I agree 100%. And, uh, you know, we will, we will continue to see more of what we want to see. So if we're, 
if we're, you know, seeing fear and we're seeing, um, you know, evil and whatever it is, if, if we're seeing people waking up, we're going to see more of people waking up. So you get to decide. Choice is the human is the human superpower and you will see more of, of what you want to see. And, you know, there, there, I believe that there is not any more or less evil or, um, you know, negativity going on right now. It's just that it's, it's, uh, it's the veil has been lifted. It's all in front of our face. Yeah. And we, we have a choice to become aware of it and look at it and face it and deal with it and let it come up and let it move through us. Or we can just continue to shove it down and it'll continue to eat at us, um, you know, until, until we collapse underneath it. And uh, I, I, really, I, I really don't think that um, it'll go that far, but you know, there is, there is potential on both sides and, and I know what narrative that I wanna, that I wanna tune into. Amen to that. The veil has certainly been lifted. And I know, you know, people say energy flows uh, where attention goes. So I choose to focus my attention on um, the good path. Yeah. Just know that whatever's coming up for you is coming up to move through you. And that, that is the biggest thing during, during breath work, during these, these, uh, these sessions, anything that comes up is coming up to move through you. It's not, it's, it's coming up because it wants out. Right. It wants to be processed through. It doesn't want to be in your, you know, backpack of you fucking holding on to it anymore. It wants to come out. So, you know, awareness is the first step in, in healing anything. We have to be aware of it and then we can, we can feel it. And when we feel it, then we, then we start to clear it and we start to let go of it. And then once we clear it, we start to become clear on what, what is the reality that we actually want? And let's focus our thoughts on that because it's so easy to focus our thoughts on all of the negativity that's going on, all of the, um, you know, all of the bad things, you know, most of our minds, when we think of, uh, when we think of something, we, we go to the first thing, okay, what's the worst that could happen? You know, mm -hmm. what's the, uh, instead of thinking about, oh man, what's the best thing that could happen from this circumstance is we have a fucking health health revolution we have people um you know uh regenerating the soil regenerating our nutrients um you know fixing the air uh cleaning the oceans we have people coming together in community and connecting you know and understanding how much we actually need connection as a as an essential nutrient that's that's what i'm hoping for and that's that's what i'm choosing yeah i'm right there with you i'm choosing the same <laughs> the same trajectory um I guess kind of just to, uh, you know, switch gears a little bit for people that have never experienced breath work, um, or people that are total beginners, even to this realm of sort of, you know, dealing with trauma or anything that's been stored, what would you, um, suggest for like a beginner level? Do you have any like tips? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there are so many different types of breath work out there. There are so many different types. Um, you know, a lot of it is stemmed in like, a lot of the deep Eastern religions, such as like Kundalini yoga and, and uh, you know, um, like Taoist philosophy and, and, and Taoist sexual breathing practices and, and all of these, all of these different um, deeply, uh, you know, occult things. And, and what I would suggest for beginners is, uh, you know, just the, the, I, I really like the Wim Hof practices because his idea is just to get it in and get it out. It doesn't matter in through the nose, in through the mouth, in through the ears, you know, whatever it is, get the air in and get the air out, you know, yeah. 20 deep, 20 deep breaths in, in through your nose and then hold it, you know, and do like three rounds of that. That, that is, you know, simplify it, just breathe, get it in, get it out, feel in your body. That's the most powerful thing you could do. Now, if you want to take it, if you want to take it deeper, I would suggest uh, um, getting a session from somebody. You know, you can reach out to me, or you know, there's so many different breathwork practitioners out there. Um, you know, Kundalini yoga is, is a great start as well too. It can, if you take it too deep, it can start to be, uh, you know, enriched in dogma, and there's some issues within that. But um, yeah, you know, 
there is there is so many different types and and one of the basic rules that i tell a lot of people is that for your standard breath you know breath is the only body rhythm that we do both consciously and unconsciously you know you can consciously control your breath or you cannot consciously control your breath you're still going to breathe yeah. you know you, your heart is your heart is an unconscious body rhythm it's going to continue to beat you know you can fluctuate it a little bit mostly with your breath but um a overall healthy breath pace is you are going to want to breathe five and a half seconds in and five and a half seconds out and you want it to be through your nose nostril breathing is the most healthy form of everyday breathing wow i didn't go into deep when i go into deep emotional breathing that's actually in through the mouth out through the mouth because it allows you to take it deeper into your belly and deeper into those um places where you might be holding on to dense dense energy but um the most healthy way to breathe is is through your nose and um a huge other practice for me is uh taping my mouth at nighttime putting a little piece oh, wow. of tape over my mouth and then i will also know uh use uh nose nostril dilators you can get them on amazon for like is that like uh those something. breathe right strips it's kind of like that but they're actually little tubes that you just plug in your nose oh and wow it opens up your uh it opens up your nostrils so i i'm a weirdo i <laughs> sleep with those in okay and then i'll tape my mouth and then i'll tape my mouth shut at night and it's crazy because i have this thing called a whoop strap that measures my uh oh those are great it, yeah i've heard of those it, uh it measures my recovery it measures my heart rate variability it, it takes all of my data on my the amount of strain that i put on my physical body um basically measures almost everything besides your glucose levels um, and it measures my sleep but as soon as i started doing that where i taped my mouth shut and i uh, put those nostril things open my recovery went up tenfold at nighttime no way wow because when you're um because when you're breathing through your mouth it's not you know we have a nose for a reason if we didn't if we you know if we didn't have a nose maybe we'd we'd supposed to breathe through our mouth but um you know our mouth is for food and maybe exhaling but but uh our, our not our nose is our our primary source for breathing so um really catching yourself if your mouth breathing at night if you are mouth breathing at night chances are you're breathing in a ton of bacteria you don't have these filters that you have in your nose to filter all that out so that's a huge practice um and it, you know you can always take it deeper if you want to if you want to schedule a session then uh hit me up that's so interesting about the nose thing sorry <laughs> i'm still uh thinking about yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um that's really interesting i i know people that are mouth breathers like in my waking life or in you know whatever um I've always been a nose breather myself, but I didn't know actually that you were, if you're sleeping and not you're breathing in more bacteria, I guess it makes sense though, because right. Your nose is your body's natural filter, but that's super yeah. interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, you know, yogic sciences behind, uh, our pranic channels within our nostrils and, you know, masculine feminine energies and, and being able to, uh, make sure both of our passageways are, are, uh, are symmetrical and, and we can breathe through both of our nostrils. You know, if you're plugged on one side, chances are there's an energetic block on, on one side versus the other side. And, you know, it, it gets deep. Wow. Wow. Well, um, this has been like so informative. This has been great. Um, where can people find you if they're interested in, you know, checking out some of your work, booking a session? Yeah. So uh, my Instagram is jaggersjr. And uh, my website is Stephen with a V uh, dash Jaggers dot com, and uh, my podcast name is uh, the Mind Body Mentor. It's on all platforms. Um, you know, you reach uh, Instagram is my primary source of uh, of communication. Also, my podcast as well. I'm actually running a facilitator training. Uh, it is sold out my first one uh, in January 15th through the 18th. Uh, it is for practitioners, coaches, uh, personal trainers, massage therapists, doctors, uh, for using breath work as a modality to release and then also find your soul's mission. 
Uh, that will be shortly made online here soon. So check it out for that. I'm primarily located in the Phoenix Scottsdale area as well as I spend a ton of time in Sedona, uh, Arizona as well. And uh, yeah, you can hit me up on the gram or through my website if you want to check my booking and, and all of that. Yeah, great. Well, Steven, thank you so much. This has been awesome, guys. If you're interested in checking out any of his stuff, all the links are going to be in the description um, for everything. Uh, so you can book a session, check it out, even just, you know, poke around, see if breathwork is something maybe you want to dive into. But I've certainly learned a lot. I hope you guys have too. Um, Steven, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah, take care, Haley. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>